my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and guess what? Today, just for you, as brand new t-shirts and mugs and Christmas ornaments, stickers and tote bags, all for the fabric curator in you. Yes, this one is so darn cute. Kate Spain designed it, isn't that fantastic? And the same image, let me just show you, as a sticker, now the Christmas ornaments are in now. They weren't in when I got mine. So the Christmas ornament looks just like this, but in an ornament. And there's tote bags. Oh, and then a sweatshirt will be coming. So that is going to be on the site very soon. Ah, so darn cute. We all are definitely the curators of our fabric, the society of stashing. <laughs> there we go. Gotta, gotta love it, gotta love it. So today we are going to talk, speaking of stash and speaking of fabric, uh, when I did a call out for those of you who have made blocks or things with your scraps, I was really, I was mostly searching for blocks and looking to see, so it gives people ideas. And then of course, you know, you shared your whole quilts and things, which is fabulous. And so I grabbed a bunch of the pictures to do a little parade and to show you a variety of things. There's a ton more ton more that came in after I grabbed these. So you want to go to Quote Along with Pat Sloan at Facebook and take a look at that. But let's see the parade. All right. <laughs> I'm going to show you a few from Adriana. She uses them, uh, the scraps that she's made into pieced blocks or image blocks like this hot air balloon. So effective. And then she's got the little basket in black and the stripes in black, which really give a definition so you know what you're looking at and quilted clouds on it. Uh, here, the sunflower, uh, all the parts are scrappy. You can look and see all the different pieces in it. And she actually entered this one in the state fair. I think it was the state fair and won a prize. And then here's another one she did where the background is all the different scrappy pieces and then cut to the shapes used. I did this when I that year that I was making all these. I did the blocks for one of the sew alongs just to show you how you can put them in to a quilt block. Arlene has a whole lot of fun blocks going on here. She likes to make her scraps into these blocks and then sew those together. Brooke decided to, <laughs> she decided to use her scraps on the chicken salad quilt. So she's doing the applique chickens. Aren't they fantastic? And then all the scraps for the sashings around them. It's just looking wonderful, Brooke. Carolyn is doing string blocks, so these are done on foundation, and she has rectangles. I thought those were super cool. Look on the bottom left, the first block. What do you see? I see Tweety. I see Tweety. <laughs> I see some baseballs on the bottom right one, too. So they're like I spies, right? Totally I spies. Here's from Christine. She likes to make uh, blocks that, you know, her scrappy things go into full quilts, into into regular kind of blocks, so she's got them in stars. Uh, Cindy has this going on. She's got these uh, crumb blocks are a term a lot of people use because they're little bits and parts, like you can see, kind of see that here. It's not a structured block. It's not like a star with the points. So you just saw some of those, but these are just sort of randomly sewing everything together. That's what I did that year. And then she's going to use that yellow up there for some sashing. Grace, oh my goodness, look at this. So here's these crumb blocks, um, you know, scrap blocks. Uh, she's got them just, when, when you sash them and then put a border like this, it pulls all those different colors together. So you can work with a lot of different colors and not worry about it. I see animal faces, so cute. Look around, there's like animal faces in some of the blocks. Second row on the right, third row on the left. Uh, so darling. Now Heidi said she will take uh, scraps and things left over from a quilt and then make put them together to make another quilt with a, but you know you have to control this you can tell this is totally controlled scraps the blues are very similar tone the reds and burgundies are very similar tone we don't have like a pops of yellow and pink and orange this is very controlled color palette but they are scraps it is just gorgeous really really gorgeous and that is what your scraps can do you can take them any way you want 
Now Joyce here, let me show you this first one. Uh, I love that she's doing her squares with an alternate that's the same fabric. It's that black fabric with the little flowers. And then look close up because she says it's definitely an I spy. There's some watermelon seeds and a blueberry basket and a shoe and a pie and a butterfly. So effective. It's really gorgeous. All right, Karen is putting hers together. They're the kind of random pieces, but she's putting them in a bit of a control color palette as well. You can see the green and yellow on the left, the red, white, and blue on the top right. She's got a sort of fall with the oranges, and then she quilts them. She uses them as practice for quilting. Here is Karen's, her crumb blocks, which have some fun images. I see Mickey Mouse and uh, Daisy Duck and, and just really, really fun pro um, project um, fabrics. Then look at the binding. So she's got gray sashing, which calms it down, holds it all together, and then all those fabrics, different fabrics for the binding. So cool. Okay, Kellyann has do, done a Christmas version. So these are Christmas scraps, and she went for a nice wide sashing. That is so effective. It really lets, um, it kind of lets the sashing, because it's done in white, it pops that forward towards you and gives you a structure for this piece. And then the crumb blocks are in the background. Uh, here they are, the blocks before the sashing. So you can take a look. So she's got sashing on the top three rows. Well, yeah, they're kind of started. You can see them started. She has them laying on a white tile. But down below, you can see the individual blocks. So you can get an idea of the structure of that quilt and the structure of them. The Lacey shared this one, and it is just super fabulous, just so fantastic. A lot of crumb blocks, but she's done them in the color wave. So they've blue to green to yellow to red to purple. There's some purple down at the blue at the bottom. And so she's done these color waves, and then she used the flying geese on the uh, two borders. And the black, again, sets it, pops it, so that you can, distinct, you can see the distinction of what's going on if you want that. Linda is taking her. She says she makes mostly baby quilts, and so she has a lot of uh, images on the baby quilt. So she makes these little houses, and they're little eye spies. So you can see, like the uh, what is his name, Olaf or something, the little <laughs> the little snow guy, and there's a sweet little dog, and uh, the little giraffe. So that's so darling, super darling. Linda is doing hers in strips and in the crumb blocks. So like kind of the crumb blocks on the left and the strips on the right. So you can get a, you know, idea of how to make those. I like to call those coins, those strips, like coin strips. They're kind of cool. They make really cool quilts. I got two from uh, Linda here, different Linda, second Linda. Look at that. Once again, using the black sashing, and then look at her uh, little outer border with just a single row of the little squares. She didn't, I don't remember if she said what size squares they are, but they look fairly small. And then the, here's her second one. She says she makes a lot of scrap quilts. And so, the, once again, very controlled colors, but there's pops of other things. I see some pops of blue, uh, pink up at the top, gray um, around. So, you know, you once you start working like this and you control the color palettes, you can really do some very interesting things with your scraps. Here is Lori's string blocks. They look absolutely fabulous and she's got some sashing going on with them already. They're in progress. Menon has floated hers and tilted them. They're twisted and turned and she's done a color study purples, blues, green, yellow, orange, red through the through the rainbow there. And then a beautiful calming border and that pop of green for the binding is fantastic. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for sharing. We still have a few more here. Martha, I've got a couple from Martha. Here is where she's got um, squares. She's primarily working with squares uh, as her scraps, which is kind of what I mostly do, except for that one year where I was nuts. <laughs> and uh, there, there you go. She's got all the squares. And then she's made, here's a quilt with, once again, using gray to separate. And I love the, the fabric she's with the cornerstones. And that same fabric is the alternating for the the um, 16 patches. So there is a really different uh, way of looking at it as well as a color wash. Oranges, whites, greens, reds. You know, they're not um, sort of random. They're more controlled, each block. It's really pretty. And then she did my traffic jam um, pattern, which is a free pattern of mine, and that looks super cool. 
Patricia has some blocks going on here, crumb blocks. They're very beautiful pinks and greens. I can see a spring quilt coming out of that. We are going to want that about March. So get sewing. You're going to want it. <laughs> Peggy's crumb block. So you can see the structure of a crumb block. It can be so, it can be so different. Uh, she has a bit of a structure going on with like a square in the middle and then around it and around it. Uh, but then there's a lot of rectangles. And so I really like that. It's super cool. Rebecca's blocks they are fantastic these are like these the true scrap bag just pull it out sew it together uh, they look so awesome and then remember back now you set that if you want to if you set that with a sashing that really um, gives definition to the blocks uh, it looks so good and then she's also using uh, tape like a you know paper tape or something so that she can do little tiny pieces and use those up couple more here shells oh my goodness uh, very cool crumb blocks and then her sashing is fantastic that really wave I think that's a K facet fabric with that wave she also did a little tiny squares as an inner border but she separated it by that deep navy so you can see each block there's some color you know there's like a blue and yellow block and a yellow and black block and a blue and black block so you know they they're really controlled and i see a heart on the second row on the left sue sue has one to show us setting all those crumb blocks side by side there's no sashing this is so fantastic she has controlled the colors there's blues and whites up to pinks and purples and so you can see they're not kind of all mixed up they make a color wash across across the quilt and our last one is from Sylvia. And she likes to take the, the blocks, her scraps, and make these little um, tilted log cabin blocks, which you can see at the top. And then she puts little roofs on them, uh, adds trees. And I love some of the trees have a light background. Some of the trees are white with a green background. Look at the second and third row. And then she has those little lollipop trees. Uh, that's all so cool. And I think that might be a pattern in a book um, of somebody's. So, okay, there you go. A walk through scrappy goodness. Your blocks are just, they're inspiring. They kind of got me like, oh, I really need to go use mine and maybe make more. <laughs> but first I want to use mine. And uh, I actually brought the quilt. I went and found my quilt that I used mine in, the full quilt. Let me get that. These are my blocks that, uh, that I made over the year. Uh, and what I did is I just made them into half square triangles with my harmony wide back. I use that and then just set them. Once you make those big half square triangles, you have just all kinds of leeway to set them as works for you. So that is the one that I did and I really, really love it. It was so fun. It's just, it is a way to have those blocks being um, all different kind of sizes or like all different kind of interiors, actually construction, that's the word. And then you just make them into half square triangles. And so it just totally makes everything come together. I hope you got a lot of tips with that parade too. I sort of walked you through what I was thinking and what was going on. All right, I have two, a couple other things, several things. So first is the Oh My Stars, and I've been working on that, uh, getting, the, getting to the next section, and I did a bunch of clips, so let's see those. So what I'm gonna be doing here is figuring out where the star positions are and doing the fabrics that surround them, just like I did the one block. So I did this one block here. This is all sewn. See, this is a sewn block, and then I positioned the rest of them. So there's the top, this one, this one, this one, and that one. No, no, not that one, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. There's five stars. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and I just, I just sort of used the, it's kind of like crossword puzzle, you know? I just put this block up first and then put the number down, the number to the left, up, down to get to here that way I didn't have to figure it out that's why it's, it's just got these these on the board <laughs> now I want you to look at the mix of fabrics once again this is a line that has um, a fair I, I always call them fairly dark and then well let's get one here there's also peach 
and you're missing the peach. Then we have um, sort of a medium. It's like these are dark, 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 um, medium, and then the super light. So the one thing, remember I have two charm packs to work with, and this is just one of them open. So I will open this one, and I will then move and put these lights so that they're sprinkled all around. So I don't have like a clump of lights here or like anything that looks like a row of them because they're going to be very distinct. And so I want to sprinkle them around. Now I have... I used two in that block, um, which just, you know, uh, it just happened to be what I did. And so I ended up, I put one up there, one down here. So what I will do is just build out and put some of the lights so that I can just mix them all up. So for this particular fabric line, in, the, in how they did their pre-cuts, there are 20, that includes counting the ones on the wall, there are 20 of these. So I can do two per row of white, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two per row, which means already I would move that one because it's, uh, there's 22 from that block. So I'm just going to lay out those two, two at a time, two per row of the white. So there are all the lights. Now I could swap one out. I think I'm able to swap out one or two, like maybe like I might swap that for another color. This one here, um, you know, there is a border and stuff on it, uh, but sorry, I banged the camera. So that, that's where we are. So this is what your assignment is, is to get your star points. Okay, that's the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna get the rest of the fabrics around each of the star points. Uh, so that I can sew those. Okay, at this point, I have fabric around, whoops, <laughs> around each of them to make the star point. So there's the star, that one here. So now I think I'm going to, I've already, I've sort of uh, eliminated, because I only need 75 blocks, so I've eliminated those small white pieces and all of the rust color uh, that that are not, they're similar to the center of the star. Okay, so that's pretty much how it's going. This is your assignment, and I will just fill in those blanks. And there we go. I was waiting on a phone call, so I just, while I was waiting, I was putting all the rest of them up on the wall. Oh, and I ended up with one black one also that I didn't use. So the most, the most I'm gonna look at things were maybe I can shift like right here, maybe I'll try to shift something, but I don't know, there's gonna be star points, so I'm not maybe so worried about that one. You know, kind of, kind of looks like green, green, green. A couple of them are like that, but that's just the way it is because these have got a lot of green, a lot of black. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm good. And the rust is only for the stars. So there's no rust blocks other than the B, so I lied, other than the B and, um, did, was there a rust? No, there was no rust um, mushroom. So just those bees I kept in there for the rust colorway because I love the bees. But I might need to switch them. I actually just saw they're like run right above the other. So I might just flip that one over there. Okay, one last look. <laughs> and I am going to put this photo on my... Um, article today over at the website so you can see it. So I will keep working on this, sewing the units around the star first because I can put the star points on it. And the rust color is very um, low contrast. You know, it's not like a high contrast. I could have made them maybe used all the whites there or just the black, but there's a lot of black in there. So I probably would have had to buy more fabric. So it just made sense for me with the rust and I, you know, I really like it. Um, so other thing I have today <laughs> is there was a whole conversation about what um, were some great gifts to give our buddies that are like under 15 bucks, you know, like sort of, you know, little gifties that you can leave at a luncheon or maybe you all get together with your friends. So I have a few of them here. One would be, of course, my stickers and I have other stickers besides this one uh, so if you go out uh, to the link below and at my website today you can pick up some stickers for your buddies hey fabric fabric society there we go the fabric curators and so what else what else how about these little cat hooks that I showed you they are so darling everybody can use a new seam ripper 
because you know they do go dull so those are great how about making some little bags and putting treats and a spool of orophil thread in there the bobbin boats are one of my favorites these are amazing you can just give a make another, again make a little bag put the bobbin boat in there so cute the thread cutters there's these two styles are my favorite and uh so they they take a rotary cutter in there like an old blade you put in there and so these these are great absolutely great and we can always use more of those uh, these stash and stores i love these i have three of them on my desktop and in my in my rolling case you can just put your scissors you can put a ruler this is what i do the rulers i use all the time so i can just grab them your pens your uh, seam rippers you know just like this and then they stand there so those are some fantastic little little items you can give to your buddies oh there's also which is really cool you can get them right now there's the case that's a little smaller than this the size that is 12 inches and fits like a layer cake this one's a little bit bigger but that's under 15 dollars. i think they're only like 10 bucks and they fit like a layer cake or two jolly bars so all the links to that are under the description box and at my website today and i had something very sweet come in the mail from lois in alabama it has a couple of parts so she sent the happy face card i love happy faces so darling so so darling and inside was some of the horse fabric i think she said she and her is it her granddaughter i think that's what yes she and her granddaughter are now watching the show together so hi <laughs> and she also sent a yummy starbucks Mwah! and some gnome things gnomes and mushrooms look how sweet the tin is look at this and it has like stitching on the back look how cute plus oh my goodness look at these little guys okay i have to get them going the right way they have polka dots on their hat there's four of them look how sweet they are look at them so cute there's the fourth one <laughs> and uh, and the little bag i love this little bag how cute is this she also does, um, oh, what's it called, diamond art? Yeah, and so she made this for me. <gasps> Look how sweet, with a little gnome in a little pink truck. Oh, and a little something for Greg she sent along, which is in its own little box. So Greg says, thank you so much. He was so shocked and so appreciative. He said, it's just beautiful. Mwah. All right, my friends, if you're doing an Oh My Stars or you have one and you need to get it rebooted, re-sewing on it, whatever the status is, I'm just working on this uh, as I can, but on Fridays I always have some sort of segment. So there it is. I am excited to move forward. Plus, be a fabric curator with me. I think you already are, right? You just need to, you just need to shout it from the rooftops. <laughs> Drink it in the morning. <laughs> stick it somewhere there you go <laughs> remember there's an ornament this size too they're super super cute i'm ordering that next okay my friend i love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the sloan zone i will see you online <laughs>